And welcome back. It's time to explore the habitation parts. I'm excited. Let's see what we've got in here. Oh. Oh, it's a poltergeist. You ever been half awake? Yes, I have. I think I am half awake right now. Whoa! He pushes me back when I damage him. Well, I took a bunch of damage there. Interesting. I noticed that too the last time I fought one of these at the bathroom. Couldn't quite uh, make out what was going on there. Okay, so hold on. We have a status. Suit damage. Use a suit repair kit. Oh, I have that. In fact, I have many, no? Let me sort. Suit repair kit would be... That one. Dude, I have so many. What the fuck? Hold on. Don't split, don't split. Use. That's insane. I feel like I should sell some of these or like recycle them at least. I don't need that many. And I have 43 spare parts. That's actually good to have because I can repair turrets and all that. Very important to have that. Uh, but these though, that's way too much. More than I need for sure. Let's eat some food. And let's also consume some Psy Hypos. We gotta be hype for this, you know? Okay, so let's see who's in here. Also, I do wonder, why do we have... Oh, okay, it's just for people who, I guess, were not important enough to have their own quarters. You know? I mean... Yeah. I don't want to say lesser people, but maybe people of lesser status on the station or of importance, you know. Note. Package pickup. Anders, your package arrived. Front desk. If I'm not here, the code 7532 on the gate. I won't tell anyone if you don't. Again. These fucking people leaving passwords left and right. The mail room. I've already been there. In fact, I hacked my way in there. I don't need no stinking password. I'm Hacker Man himself. Okay, so Anders Klein. I remember his name. And you know what? It's kind of funny to try and keep track of all these names on the station. It is difficult to keep track of everyone. And I occasionally forget uh, names and connections between people and stuff. You know, but then I read through the notes after a session and I... And I'm reminded of absolutely everything. Um, Jose Costa, I remember that name. I remember this name. Lan Yin? Not sure. Maybe. Eddie Voss, I remember. Hold on, can, is there something up here? Not really. Whoop. What's this say? 0403. Oh. What we got here? Also nothing. Axiom. Get ahead of the future. Nice. Alright. We also had a quest in here. There it is. Gallegos' habitation pod. That is not Gallegos, though. Who's that? Malia Fowles. Or Malaya Fowles. Who are you? I haven't heard your name, I don't think. This is Fowles. Officer Fowles. Oh. Malia. Officer. An important request. It's sensitive, though. I need to know I can trust you with a surveillance matter. Uh, yes, of course, sir. It's just that normally I can't do something like that without consent from Chief Elazar HR and another director. Those people report to me, Milia. Yes, sir. I understand. I want you to keep an eye on Annalise Gallegos. Where she goes. The house she keeps. Visitors. I'll log everything on the security computer. Good. Send me a report at the end of the week. Yes, sir. I really love Alex's voice. He, so, he has a sort of commanding tone, while, while still being uh, very relaxed in his uh, tone, you know what I mean? It's kind of cool. So, he had Malia Fowles spy on Gallegos. Not a big surprise, I guess, because uh, he was suspicious of Gallegos, right? Maybe this was before everything went crazy, and uh, a security officer was sent to uh, escort her, and then things got really bad. How did she die, though? And she's resting right next to Annalise Gallegos' pod. Or not resting, I guess, hanging out. <laughs> hmm. Does make sense. Officer Malia, right? 
Black suit, security. We remember that much. Who's this? Sky Braxton. Ooh. That was the uh, musician, exactly. Look at that, the guitar. Uh, playing with Daniel show at the music demonstration, wasn't it? The yellow tulip, that's right. Exactly. Sky Braxton and Daniel show. Let's see. Wanted to check in on you, Sky. Just a Neuromod hangover. I feel weird. I can't believe you got modded for Alex's clown show at the Tulip. Are you kidding? I've always wanted to play an instrument, but never had the time. It's so... It's like I can see the sheet music in my head. I feel like I've been doing this since I was seven. Besides, you are going to be on stage with me, right? Only to catch you if you suddenly collapse. And only if you keep me from punching Alex if I drink too much. I do wonder, if you get a Neuromod and you become super proficient in something. Like playing the guitar, right? She said it felt like she has been proficient at it since she was like seven. Would you still feel the satisfaction of knowing uh, that you put in all the hard work? Do you get this sort of... Or is it without the memory of putting in all the work and seeing the progress built up? That's actually something I've wondered. Because it would be cool to just go like Matrix style... Tell me how to steal this motorcycle. Give me that skill, you know? But you, you're sort of missing out on the whole... On the path to get there. And apparently people are having headaches and hangovers from Neuromods. Not to mention all the other fucking side effects of... Losing your memory if they're uninstalled and... Having... Typhon shit in your brain. Doesn't sound too good, does it? Okay. All right. I make O2, and you? I don't get it. What's the joke? It's a tree, I get that. Is there something deeper behind that, or is it just... Maybe it's too late. <laughs> I don't get it. I make O2, and you? Joshua Vanstry and Lawrence Baxter. I remember this name. Udon noodles. Thanks. Cool. What do we got here? Lawrence Baxter's transcribe. Okay. You've got me really curious. Are you ready for your instructions, my lady? This better not get us into trouble. Not too much trouble, anyway. <clears throat> First, you must journey to the tree where we carved our initials. And what if I bump into Julian Howard? Run like hell. Julian the Ogre does not like people touching his trees. Or his, uh, fruit. <laughs> Probably be a lot less grumpy. Anyway. Beneath a stone you will find a magical key card. This key card will unlock everything your heart desires. Oh, well, I don't need a key for that. And don't worry about work. Michaela said you could take an extra shift since it's your birthday. The lover's gift. Huh. Let's see it. A crew member named Lawrence Baxter left a gift for his lover L. Gold. Gold. Under rocks near a tree that he carved their initials into in the Arboretum. I could find whatever it is in case it's useful. Tracking L with a security station might lead me to the site. Hmm. Okay. Sure, I'll be doing that. I'm kind of excited to just cl clear up some loose ends here with all these quests that I have, you know? Alright, alright. Cool. What do we have here? Salman Kapoor? Emma Beatty? Oh, she was the fitness person. Who was supposed to make Alex not fat. But Alex was like, no. I don't want to do the practice stuff. <laughs> And I guess she's also responsible for uh, keeping me healthy, right? At least we found some correspondence regarding that, unless I'm completely imagining things. Okay. Is Salman Kapoor in here sleeping? M imagine sleeping through this entire thing. Also, what's this? Exterior breach detected. Ooh. 
3.27 Kelvin. Yeah. Okay. Kind of want to go spacewalk as well. Let's see what she got up here. Of course she has posters of fitness people. People doing fitness things. And that's her character. An archer. Rosalind Swift. Fitting name, I guess. Maybe these numbers mean something. Maybe not. These are the uh, runs she's participated in, I guess. This is something you would wear on your chest, right? I don't know much about running. Oh yeah, look at that. She has medals and shit. Ooh, she's a big shot. Unfortunately, she burned alive. Sadness. What an end. Flexi foam bolts. Bad dreams. Hi, mommy. I've been having bad dreams since you left. Dr. Preston said I should draw it and that would help them make them go away. I hope you like my picture and come home soon. I love you, Corey. Must be a small child. Wait, what? Say what now? Regina Sellers. I remember that name too. Oh, but I can't keep track of exactly where I saw that name. Did we kill a phantom with that name? I have memories of that. Unless I'm uh, mistaking it for someone else. But dude, her kid, I guess? Whoa. Wait, what's happening? Oh, I'm, I, I can't even click the right buttons right now. I'm so fucking confused. It's insane. I was trying to right click on my mouse to get the scope away, but that's not the keybind for that. I was trying to psychoshock this thing right here. Um, so I guess her kid is having dreams about Typhons? That's bad. Assuming the kid is on Earth. Hold on. What? I've been having bad dreams since you left. Dr. Preston said I should draw it and that would help make them go away. I hope you like my picture and come home soon. Damn. What is happening on Earth? Maybe there is some sort of mental connection happening here. Between uh, people and Typhons and whatever. Does not bode well for Earth, I'm gonna tell you that. Pomegranate moonshine? Oh wait, the tornadoes? Didn't we see that in the uh, HR division? Excerpt from a journal written by Holly Granger. That's the person, I guess, we're, whose bunk we're on right now. In 2034. I should still be down there playing. My guys needed me and my shoulder just couldn't deliver. I couldn't deliver. I brought a lot of autographed gloves with me and passed them out like candy at Halloween. But it turns out a lot of these test tubers don't follow sports at all. Much less know about my career, short as it was. What are the chances Mr. Yu could set me up with the neuromods I'd need to put me back in the game? Hell, he could buy a franchise and stock it with the greatest players that ever lived. If I got a neuromod, would it be me playing? The league would never let modded players in. But how would they know? Yeah, man. This is an issue, isn't it? Basically like doping, but the extreme version of it. Iris Stein? L. Gold. That was the person uh, who was in that um, quest that we just picked up, wasn't it? Okay. Dude, I'm just having a blast exploring this whole place, man. So far, the crew quarters have been amazing. I absolutely love this. It's so good. Habitation pods? Wait, there's more over here? Like, I, I, I get that it's not accessible right now, but... Oh, yeah, look. Someone had some bunks in there, too. Rip. We've got a leak up there, it seems. Now, is there anything where I can crawl? Maybe some secrets around here. Doesn't look like it. At least not at first glance. 
Thank you. I love this table design of just hanging it from the fucking roof. Although, wouldn't it kind of wobble around unless these are very rigid? It's cool though. I can dig it. Okay, I think we're sort of done here. You know what would be really cool in this game? Uh, to have like a dossier of all the people you meet, you know? That you could like go into in the menu and be like, oh, remind me again. Who is uh, Joshua Vanstree? And then it would update based on the stuff you found. Maybe just to keep it a bit easier to keep track of. Because you do have to remember a lot. Not really complaining though. It's just a small thing. So we have Lorenzo Calvino. Let's check out his cabin. The old geezer. Oh, of course he would have that in here. Of course. Oh, that's so cool. Wait. No way. He built this miniature model. And it's recording with a camera and it's being displayed over here. That's fucking cool. What? Oh. Is the coffee cup in the shot now? <laughs> okay, fine. That is cool, man. May 23rd, 0523. Wait, what? May 23rd, May 23rd. Anniversary reminder. Oh. Oh, wait. He was... He was losing his memory a little bit, wasn't he? Was he weighing this thing? I know this guy likes to weigh things. We got a code for his safe. Or what did that say? Or was it for the computer, maybe? LG controls. Looking glass on, looking glass off. Oh my god! He's hiding the safe behind the looking glass! That's so cool, man! Oh, fucking Calvino. I love this man. He's the best. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. 0523. I wonder what he has in his safe. Raid wire, EMP, and Neuromods. Three of them. That's not bad. That's pretty cool. We have 12 Neuromods. Jesus, I keep piling these up. I need to use them. What should I use them on? Let's think about this. I kind of want to keep going with the uh, lab tech. Just to upgrade my Q-beam, make it nice. But... Let's just take a look here. Neurostimulant. No. No. This could, actually, yeah, this could be nice. I want more chipsets. Yes, thank you very much. Inventory, scope, chipsets. Let's install some more, because we have so many, look at this. Upon killing a Typhon, there's a chance to trigger a fear blast on other nearby Typhons. Uh, I don't know about that. Increases maximum side pool, it could be okay. Wrench critical? I think that's nice. I use the wrench a lot. It's a lot of fun. To just whack the shit out of those mimics. Boosts the amount of damage done by Psycho Shock. You know what? Not bad. I have Psycho Shock, right? Oh, but why can't I use it? Oh, I can. Okay. Let me just see if there's anything else. Reduces this cooldown. No. Nope. Nope. This could be nice, especially for enemies that um, are harder to scan. It's very utility-based. And you know what? I think I will like that. I'm going to remove this. Uninstall that. I keep trying to double-click, but it's not quite working. So I'm going to do this instead. Click enter. There we go. And now, Neuromods. Let's see if we want some more Typhon stuff. Do I want any of this? I don't think so. This does seem cool. But it requires this first. This one is boring, because it's just take less damage, you know? It's like, eh. Telepathy. Remote manipulation. Psycho shock. More damage. Backlash. What's that? Fear resistance. Okay. 
Not really. Morph, however. No, I already tried that. Uh, energy, let's see here. Thermal resistance, no. That could be cool, I guess. Electrostatic burst. No. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to take these things. What would that get me? More stamina? You know, that would be nice because I do run out of stamina quite quickly when I swing my wrench about. You know? I can run faster? I think I'm running okay fast already. Yeah. This does seem kind of fun though. Gain the ability to sprint with ludicrous speed. What does that mean? <laughs> Seems a little wild. Combat focus too. I feel like I should be using this more. I know I've said that throughout this entire thing. But honestly, it, it is kind of fun to just shoot the old weapons, you know? Like, normally. Um, but it, it is also fun to stop time, I guess. Would be cool if one of these uh, removed time completely so everything stood still. Now oh, that would be awesome. And you could just uh, run around them, you know? R run behind them, attack, attack, and then time continues or something. That would be awesome, too. Um, this is just a natural lifespan, right? Increases damage with security weapons. I mean, I use a lot of weapons. This may not be a bad idea. 20% extra damage across the board is like wild, right? You know what? Let's do that. That may seem a little boring to get, but whatever. Engineer. Impact calibration. This one could be cool. What is this one? It's a chance to do bonus damage. Okay, I could become a wrench master. I think I'm gonna save for the lab tech 2 next. Yeah, when I have three more neuromods, that's what I'm gonna do. For sure. I may even spend some uh, recycler grenades to get more minerals somewhere. Maybe make a huge pile of items that I think will contain minerals and just throw a recycler in there, you know? Could be fun. LG server status. A bunch of them are okay. Is there anything else going on inside of this looking glass? I think we're okay there. That's a diagnostic screen. LG visor prototype? Wait. Wait, you put this on and everything is like... Wait a minute. Dude, I just had a crazy thought. Oh, wait a minute. Simulation. VR... Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's read this. Never. I have never removed a Neuromod. And yet, today... I could not find my way to the hardware labs. I wandered the Arboretum for an, an hour. I made some excuse, but I know me you suspects. I cannot keep making toys for Transtar when I told Alex what I want to try. He gave me a device to help. Parapsychological contraption. Morgan made it. Some of the components what? are beyond me. So wait, he's just losing his memory naturally? I guess getting old? Is that what's happening? Unless he doesn't remember. I mean, you know? Entry 2. The same dream again. There is something wrong with this station. Yep. Something here with us, but I am hallucinating now. There, there, there is no question. No, I think you're onto something. You're not the only one who's had bad dreams. On this station and off this station, it seems. Even kids on Earth are having these dreams, dude. I, I tried to open the locker, but I, I could not remember our anniversary. And for a moment, even her name escaped me. Her name! Oh. One day, I wake up and cannot even remember the work I am doing. I must... Give it all to Morgan. 
He will know what to do with it. Oh man. Does he have dementia or like what is, what is the other thing called? Like Alzheimer's. Oh man, that's so fucking sad. Unless he actually just doesn't remember because he had neuromods removed. And something like that is messing with his mind. Like he thinks he never had a neuromod, but maybe he did and he just doesn't remember it, you know? I don't think so though. I feel like there could be truth to that. He was old, right? And he was doing the old grandma th grandpa thing. You know, writing. So is this password okay for my terminal? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. So wait, he, sh he gave me a bunch of information to carry on his research in case he went all nuts or what? Last entry. First test. Anterior electrodes overheated uh, after six seconds. But I swear, there was a moment I saw her again. The day we met on the Costa Amalfi. Her lemon sundress. My Clorinda. Oh, man. He's making the VR goggles to remember his wife. <sighs> anyway, so when I saw this, I... Th okay, so I guess that kind of shoots a hole in my theory here, but... I was about to say something really crazy before, and I'm gonna say it now anyway. So, remember the uh, Project Cobalt interaction, the audio log we heard, where in order for that to work, we would have to have actual experiences, or the Typhon that would be, that would be having uh, mirror neurons implanted would need to have actual experiences, right? And then I, Morgan, said we could simulate it. Of course, I thought, oh, the apartment, right? And I still think that, by the way. I still think the apartment is that whole Project Cobalt thing somehow. I need to figure out exactly how that holds together with everything else we know. But then I thought, maybe they went a step further and made VR goggles or something and completely simulated so that you didn't need to have an apartment. You could basically go anywhere, if you know what I mean. But he actually made these goggles to remember his wife and have that experience of meeting her on that coast once again i'm assuming amalfi is somewhere in italy because he is italian you know and stuff oh yeah look at this that's the coast of course it is oh man look how much effort went into this too he was painstakingly crafting this with paint and Oh, man. That's just super depressing to me, man. Damn. That's wild. Really beautiful. Okay. Dude. I have a sinking feeling. I get I've, I've had this feeling. What if Dude. Remember uh So when we were in the habitation pods area in there, I saw something. Oh, I forgot exactly which one of these it was, but Remember the little kid having the bad dream? When I was reading that in my mind, I didn't say this out loud, but I thought, oh, what if this whole game was a bad dream and in the end we're gonna wake up or some shit, you know, like the classic story twist, you know? But now that I see this, what if we are wearing... What if we're sitting in a chair somewhere similar to Total Recall? You know what I mean? And we're wearing VR goggles. And then at the end it's like, thank you for experiencing the whole... Uh, space station exploration simulator thing and have a nice day hope you enjoyed it you know <laughs> you get to be the hero and save everyone or something and uh well i guess in that case i'm doing a terrible job at saving everyone but you know anyway 
what if after that recording where we mentioned the simulation thing, maybe I afterwards contacted Calvino and had him make this LG visor because of that. I don't know. Have I explored everything here? Let's see the map. I think so. I think so. All right. I want to go explore that place on the treasure map now. I know exactly where it is. Uh, watch me find my way with no issue at all. It is there. Right up there. I still don't know what this secret crate is. What, what exactly is tracking there? Uh, what objective is doing that? Is it that one? No. Whoops. Uh, kill the imposter cook. Let's just track that. That's fine. It's got to be treasure hunt. No. Oh, okay. I see. It's the, it's the whistleblower one. That makes sense. Oh, the secret crate. Of course. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Let's just uh, demark that for now so it's not cluttering the visuals. Here it is. What am I supposed to see? Hold on. Uh, I just need to see the map again just to remind myself. Notes. Treasure map. I there. Oh, is it the number six or is it something else? Oh, of course it is. Oh, okay. I understand. I understand. Remember on Abigail's computer, there was a reward thing and you had to put in a code. This is it. This is it. We have the number six now. Uh, so if I click here now, Stabfellow's map leads to the digit six. Exactly. Okay, cool. Now I just need to find the other places. You know what? I'm actually happy I'm here. Oh. Someone left some stuff there. That's fine with me, though. Uh, what else can I throw in? Every junk piece I have. And... I don't think I need more than 10. I think we're good on that front. Uh, maybe I'll just take one more back. There we go. And... Recycle. I want minerals, baby. Cool. So see, all of this up here looks like minerals to me. So, let's try and see how much we get out of it. <laughs> no! None of these things got recycled. What the hell? It's a lie. Hmm. Maybe it's only things you can actually move around in the game. Things you can pick up, you know, like this. I can pick that up. There's a turret over there. Okay. Wait, have I been in there? Oh, the recreation center. I have. Oh, I went up there. I remember this now. But I haven't been here, I don't think. The fly. Teleconferencing. Happy birthday, Daddy. Because your company has lame rules. Guess what? I finally trotted with Lita. It was awesome. Um, what else? Oh, Ren peed in one of your cowboy boots. <laughs> Sorry. I really miss you. Tell Mr. Yu I said kids should be allowed in space. Well, I guess that's all for now. I love you. <mwah> oh, man. Okay. So they went here to talk to their families, I guess. 
Reminds me a little bit of a certain scene from some sci-fi movie. That shit always makes me cry, man. I can't watch that scene without fucking tearing. Hey! What just happened? What was that? There's something happening here. I'm losing my mind. What was that light here just now? Wait, do we have another... Show yourself. Maybe not. I thought maybe we had another poltergeist on the loose. Doesn't look like it though. Okay. Cool. Alright, guess I'm out of here again. What else am I missing in this place? I I could go up here and do that now. I think I'm gonna. Uh, and I gotta be on the lookout now, by the way. Hold on, let me go up here real quick. Oh, that's gonna that's just gonna lead here. Okay, perfect. I will take the elevator. And there's our body. <laughs> our buddy buddy. What's up, Technopath? How you doing? These are the executive suites, so I should be finding myself here, right? Or like my own uh, habitation pod, if you want to call it that. Morgan U301. Let's fucking go. Damn, dude. Oh! No fucking way! It looks like my apartment in the beginning. That's crazy. What? Integral structure? B5 nanometers? Let's see what that does. Your suit is more resistant to environmental hazards. I'm okay. Dude, what are we gonna find our our terminal? Probably gonna be quite the same stuff we found in our office, I'm assuming. I guess it's not tied to the physical terminal, it's tied to the user, right? Or maybe not. Oh, wow. Beautiful sight. And then this fucking ad in the middle of it. What a buzzkill on that, huh? Look at this view. Jesus. Wait, what? Monday, March 15th, 2032? Why does it say that? That's totally wrong. It says the same thing as in my simulated apartment. An account of Fermi's question. I had this, exam this exact same book in my simulated apartment too. Dude. This is wild. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that does indeed look like uh, the person we saw on the poster with... Was it Dio Igwe in his room? Remember, I was like, is that William Yu? But, you know what? It could also have been Gustav Leitner. Remember the uh, poster in Dio Igwe's room? Or like the, the, the picture of Dio Igwe standing with someone else in a suit? It's either this guy or it's uh, Gustav Leitner. He was a big fan of him, right? Maybe he managed to get a picture together with him in that moment. Hard to say. Look at that, the pressure cooker. I feel like there are small differences here. These look different in the simulator apartment, didn't they? I mean, my memory's kind of shoddy, I mean. What the fuck kind of placement is this lamp? 
Proxies, Agents, and Personhood. Excerpt from a book on emulated entities and synthetic intelligence by Carter Billingsley. Ooh. The Supreme Court is set to weigh in on what could be a groundbreaking decision this term. Can an emulated entity be granted power of attorney? Over the last few decades, the public has become increasingly familiar with artificial helpers. From the personal assistants on their wristwatches to the smart home systems that remind you where you put your keys. But more recent advances in hybridic tech and the genius of connectomics, connectomics? The ability to map the myriad neuronal connections inside a person's brain have thrust digital doppelgangers squarely into the legal arena. Recently, billionaire Roark Wallace granted power of attorney not to one of his many estranged family members, but to a robotic facsimile, facsimile of himself named Ransom. Ransom emulates Mr. Wallace's own reasoning, interests, and to some extent personality quirks to the point where the two are nearly indistinguishable, at least over the phone. In person, Ransom's molded ceramic and carbon body, while beautiful, make his true nature unmistakable. Needless to say, Mr. Wallace's family is not amused, especially concerning Ransom's decision for how to execute Mr. Wallace's will. <sighs> okay, so that's a thing happening on Earth too. That's kind of a big lore drop there, I feel like. Isn't it? Or some background information about the society. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, F Paradox? Fermi's Paradox. Of course that's what that means. Makes sense. Oh, Memory Locks. Audio Output... October? Hold the phone! Oh wait, unless this is actually just referring to the month? For a second I thought, wait, do we have another operator? Hold on. Maybe we do. Hmm. Uh, Calvino. Calvino. Colleague. Won't notice anything wrong. Eidetic memory. Work obsessed. Perfect medical record. No absences. Okay. I guess I made these notes to myself. New entry. Show. Danielle. Head of IT. Dislikes you. Dislikes Alex more. Need to find out why. Note to self. Research. Chef Mitchell. And emotive operator hack. Okay. Yeah, because he uh, changed the voice on that operator and named it Skillet, right? It was a really funny voice. Let me hear that again. New entry. Show. Danielle. Head of IT. Dislikes you. Dislikes Alex more. Need to find out why. Note to sell. Research. Chef Mitchell. And emotive operator hack. Maybe I was using the... Uh, maybe the reason why I wanted to research... Uh, Mitchell and the... And the operator hack is because I was intending to create operators myself, right? And I needed the know-how. Why does Daniel not like me? Maybe because I'm a higher-up, you know, and people dislike those, or whatever. Not quite sure. Igwe. Dio Igwe. One of Alex's hires. Cheap to recruit due to his unpopular stance on psychic phenomena. One of the station's best scientists. Introvert. Knows about tests. Loyal to Alex. Believes your brother and Typhon can save his career. Can save his career? His stance on... Hold on. Dio Igwe. One of Alex's hires. Cheap to recruit due to his unpopular stance on psychic phenomena. One of the station's best scientists. Introvert. I see. Knows about tests. Loyal to Alex. Believes your brother and Typhon can save his career. So was he like a crank or considered a loony in the community or something because of his stance on like the supernatural or the psychic phenomena shit? Maybe he was like one of those crazy people, you know? But uh, I guess he's 
He's smart. He's intelligent, right? Mihaila. Michaela Ilyushin. Michaela. Chief engineer. Not on speaking terms. Had brief relationship. You ended it when tests began. I see. She believes it is because you discovered her medical condition, paraplexus. Mm. Convenient, but false. Severing ties seemed prudent to you. Less painful, given the impending memory loss. Right. So hold on. Is paraplexus the same thing as white noise, then? Oh, I guess I'll find out. Paraplexus. Nerve disorder. Prevents use of neuromods. Requires aggressive drug therapy to prevent degeneration. Renders candidates ineligible for assignment to Talos 1. Oh, and I guess uh, Michaela lied about that. There was some sort of uh, information we read that would suggest that she did lie about it. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been here, right? Sarah Elazar. Sarah Elazar. Chief of security. Not a friend. Knows about the Typhon. Not about your tests, but suspects. Is trustworthy, but doesn't trust Alex. Or you, yet. Okay. I feel like Alex does not realize that, because Alex is trusting her with a lot of stuff, right? Uh, for the longest time, I thought she was Alex's lapdog, almost. Doing his every bidding. You know, like, oh, you gotta apprehend this guy. Uh, take this guy down to custody. Do this, do that, you know? And she would always be like, yes, sir, I'm on it. But it does seem like she is onto things here, especially regarding the whole shady shuttle situation. She was looking into that stuff. Yeah. Very cool, man. I just don't understand this audio output October. Wait, audio. <gasps> oh! Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Calvino. Look! Colleague won't notice anything wrong. Eidetic memory. Work Look at the eye! Perfect medical record. No effort. Oh, I get it. Audio output. Where does it play from? Which device is the audio coming from? It's coming from this operator that isn't finished. I was creating October at some point. I guess... Oh, look at this. Even more stuff. This is where I made the operators. So wait, I made January? I made December? And I made October? That would suggest I also have a November. But wait, how does that make sense? If, if this is October, wouldn't that be the first to have been done? Hold on, I'm so confused. Why did I... Okay, so I started making these operators before going into the whole testing stuff. You know, before willingly going into the whole simulation routine. And I made... Why did I make multiple operators? And why did January attack December? Huh, hold on. I mean, I have my theories here. I'm just asking questions out loud, you know? Um, so, wait a minute. Who's December? I've been contacted by another operator named December. Like January, it has my voice. However, December's directive is to help me escape Talos 1. It claims that before I lost my memory... I hit the key to Alex's private escape pod in the debriefing room of the Neuromod division. Right. I was there to look for it, but instead we found a note from Alex, right? Yeah, and then it says, It looks like Alex figured out my... It's... Scheme first, though. The key was gone. I tracked a series of clues that led me to a safe in Alex's office. The safe had old transcribe logs from... Me. Plus a key to Alex's room in the crew facilities. Oh, I can't wait to see this. We're gonna search his room. Oh, it's gonna be good. Okay. So. December's directive is to have me escape Talos 1. But January's directive is to have me find these arming keys and destroy Talos 1. And if I made both operators... 
I guess it's like overriding. Maybe I had a change of heart at some point. Maybe I decided at first. Oh, in case these conditions happen, you know, the Typhon breakout or something goes wrong in the testing or Alex fucks me in the ass. You know, like he did, I guess. Um, then activate whatever directive I put into it. Because that's what the operator does, right? It just follows directions. It's a robot. And maybe I programmed January to override. It's like saying, oh, here's the latest program update. We don't want to look at the old stuff, you know? Override it. A.K.A. disable December. Or, like, take care of it. That's why January came in and was like, poof, nailed December. Actually, right in front of my eyes, too. But that makes me think, why didn't I just manually disable? Um, why didn't I just manually disable December? And why is this one not finished? Unless this was just a prototype and I never got to finish it. You know? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe... Oh, dude, this is it. The reason I didn't destroy... December, when I made January, is because I forgot I made December. Oh, it makes total sense, right? Think about it. I make December... ...with a certain directive... ...and then something happens, whatever it is. Like, I guess I have my Neuromods removed, or... Uh, I, I lose my memory, basically. And then I basically get the same idea. Oh, I want to make this operator just in case something goes wrong with the testing, you know? But except I've forgotten everything else before then. So I just make an operator and I happen to make it in that month, right? So that's why I call it January and not December. And I don't have any knowledge of December ever existing. Right? That makes total sense. Hmm. My head is definitely spinning a little bit, given all this information here. Like, it doesn't make any sense why I would willingly make multiple versions of these. Unless I lost my memory. I mean, we know I lost my memory. Okay. I've been spending a lot of time just theorizing about this right now, but... I think it's really fun to do. I think I'm onto something here for sure. I think there's also a... I think there's a November out there, somewhere. Maybe there's even an October out there. Maybe this is just a prototype for the October, or... Actually, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure why this is here and not finished. You know, whatever I see in this room right here should reflect the latest thing I did. Just logically speaking, right? So why wouldn't this be, I guess, January in that case? Unless we're jumping a whole year ahead. Maybe January was the first I made and then a whole year went by? Nah, that doesn't make any sense. Testing didn't take that long. Okay, I don't know. But what I do know is we have Alex's room to search. And I'm excited to get to the bottom of this shit, man. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Um, and look at this. The awesome art I have here still. Where's the other piece? Where's Drake's equation? No, that was my favorite. Okay, whatever. Awesome. Oh, man. Oh, man. Alex, you guess sweet? Let's go in here first. Ah! Oops. Holy shit, that got me! Oh, you Argentino Pero! Oh, I'm taking pleasure in murdering you. Actually, I don't. I'm not. I don't mean that. It's just you know he was a he was a phantom, and um, it is what it is. Actually, it makes sense. He was a guest, right? Maybe I can find out why he was so highly regarded that he had a suite like this. I was thinking... Oh, hold on. Maybe I could have seen the... Uh, champagne that he poured in his toilet. Or whatever it was. Remember that? Or sparkling water. It was sparkling water. <laughs> ah, he, he got his old Sardar bourbon, it seems. That motherfucker ended up with his bourbon. Sales folder? Excerpt from a Transtar sales and marketing internal memo by Peter Laney. I don't think we have to worry too much about the side effects. From what I gathered, it's just a little pinprick near the eye, right? I mean, it looks scary, but... Oh, wait, we read this one before. 
Yeah. They don't want that shit to leak. We read about that. Man, who were you? Argenteno Pero. Do I get to know about you at all, or...? Nothing? What a suite, huh? Actually not the best suite ever, because there's no windows, and you... Oh, right! <laughs> you know what's funny? I'm doing the exact same thing right now that Argenteno was doing. He was like, what kind of suite is this? There's no windows on a space station. And I was just about to do the same. It's like, what kind of shit is this? There's not even windows here. <laughs> I swear I'm not losing my mind, okay? I'm, I don't have a shitty memory. Or maybe I do, but... I thought that was just funny the way I fell into the same trap there. Maybe I am Argenteno Peru. What if it turns out... That I'm not actually Morgan. I'm Argenteno Peru, and I've been all along. And, as part of... An excuse... That Talos made to this guy of, oh, I'm sorry, the sparkling water was bad. I'm sorry there's no windows. Can we offer you uh, a little bit of VR experience in the VR room? You know, you can pretend to be this hero on a space station and you will evade a an alien force coming in. And I'm actually Argenteno Pero. <laughs> AKA Total Recall style. I'm getting... I'm not actually thinking that, okay? I'm not even sure about the whole simulation theory I had there with the VR goggles that I'm sitting somewhere, but... Just imagine. Imagine if I was actually Argenteno Pero. I wouldn't mind if that was the actual twist here, you know? I would be pleased with that, because that's hilarious. And that is actually amazing. Everything was about Argenteno Pero from the beginning. This motherfucker. He does have a big flat-screen TV here, though. That's something. Why were you so famous, Argenteno? Huh? I want to know. I need to know. Alex, you. Dude. I'm going to save this for the next episode. Going to cliffhanger this one a little bit. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to sit down now and review some notes. And um, try and come up with a coherent theory in my mind about what the fuck is going on. I kind of want to have a decent grasp on things before I head into here, you know? I'll see you.